Hey, what's up everyone? This is Silver Slayer and welcome to your daily silver stacking video. Thank you for tuning in. This is easily the most important news that has come out recently regarding the silver shortage and the rapidly rising demand for the solar revolution as miners try to keep up with numbers that seem almost impossible to reach. Before we jump into this important article though, folks, I dropped a new product for my clothing line, AG47 Apparel, which is basically a clothing line designed for silver stackers. We have this stack silver shirt. Um, on the bottom, it says sold out. It's almost like this wavy static look. I think it looks really good. We have tons of different clothes on there. Go to slayersmerch.com or click the link in the description if you want to check out anything. This is one of my favorite designs so far. So yeah, let's get back to the video. Australia's biggest silver mine in two decades taps solar boom. This is crazy. Now, this operation is going to start in 2023. But when we look at all of the different scenarios, when we connect the dots, this could be huge for several different reasons. And it could affect the price of silver for several different reasons that we'll talk about in a second, because we do have a second article talking about silver price and demand outlook. There is a direct correlation to demand versus silver prices. We have numbers dating back to 2012, looking at every year supply and demand from all of these different sectors. It's gonna be a very educational video, very informative. So make sure you like the video, please participate. Please help the algorithm gods promote this video, push it to other silver stackers. And you could do that by liking the video, commenting, you know, and sharing it. So yeah. Australian prospector is aiming to tap into what it says is a robust long-term demand outlook for silver, a key ingredient in solar panels. And I don't think this is just going to affect the, the solar panel uh, part of the industrial revolution or this new technological, this digital age that we're advancing into. I mean, electric vehicles is something that I think a lot of people underlook. We're always talking about the solar panel sector, but at the end of the day, Electric vehicles are growing at astronomically fast paces. Every automobile company by the year 2030 is going to be an electric vehicle. And that's something important to take note of because, yes, this operation starts in 2023, but then we also have 5G towers, silver lithium ion batteries, so many different things that need a lot of silver in the next several decades. The numbers that are currently coming out versing production versing the supply will never be realistic to meet the demand low supply high demand shoots the price up but this article could change things a little bit we have a lot to talk about in this video now silver mines bowden's project in new south wales set to start operations in 2023 we have an initial output target of six million ounces per year now that's that's very little when we're looking at the demand, when we're looking at how much silver is needed, but let, let's just keep going further. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about all this. That will make it the country's biggest new mine for the metal in more than two decades. Australia is number two silver producer behind South 32's Cannington mine in Queensland. In Queensland. Now we know Mexico, Peru, um, Australia, which is right now number two, they are the, the biggest silver producers in the world. Mexico and Peru, which those two countries alone accumulate 40% of the global silver production, which is massive. But, and they got hit hard from the, I can't even say the word, from you know what. So the resource is vast and growing. It's the largest undeveloped silver project in Australia and one of the largest in the world said uh, McClure said in an interview silver's role in the energy transition will aid the long-term fundamentals and the project will also chip away at Latin America's market domination he said Mexico is the world's biggest miner of silver which is also used in electronics jewelry and bars and coins followed by Peru like I was just saying Mexico and Peru McClure and said that Bowden's project trades at a discount to its U.S. listed peers because of its location and it's seeking greater North American ownership. Shareholders include global resources investors such as Sprott, Vanek, Associates. 
Silver prices tested an eight-year high in February amid a retail investor frenzy stoked by Reddit's Wall Street bets, which aka Wall Street Silver. They've cooled since then. However, tracking a pullback in gold as investors switch to assets more exposed to the global economic recovery. Still, the precious metal remains elevated compared to its levels for most of the past decade, and I would say several decades. Silver has come off over the past couple of months. We're not concerned about that. Our mantra has been to de-risk the project and hopefully that will coincide with a stronger market. So it looks like they're coming at this from all angles. And here's where the meat and potatoes is. These are the numbers. And trust me, numbers don't lie. And these figures are, are, are pretty shocking, baffling. So while silver is a byproduct at many Australian mines, which means they find it by accident. They're looking for gold, lead, zinc. If they find some silver, they'll take it, but they're not looking for it. So resources identified to date have lacked the scale to make standalone developments viable. The country is the world's number five silver miner, producing around 44 million ounces a year, according to the Silver Institute, which is the holy grail of information, like I always say. That compares with the 178 million ounces from Mexico and 110 million ounces from Peru. Global demand was just under 900 million ounces last year, around half of which was from industrial buyers. And that's what I wanted to look at. Remember when I said they're going to be producing 6 million ounces per year from that mine, but the demand is 900 million ounces? That, that seems very small. But then you have to incorporate... You know, the, the entire country is producing 44 million ounces per year. You have 170 million ounces coming from Mexico, 110 from Peru, but Mexico and Peru are the two largest. So we have a demand of 900 million ounces, but the two biggest countries alone are only producing 288 million ounces. That is, that, that's very worrying, especially since half of which was from industrial buyers, which is needed. For this, So even though these projects are huge and this is breaking news and th this stuff is coming out, I don't see how in the world we are going to over the next couple decades. We might be able to pull it off for a decade to keep up with the demand. Well, I mean, we'll be scraping by, but I don't see how past 10 years we're going. Th this is realistic. They're going to have to change something, whether they kick up mining whether they learn new ways to mine whether they ban silver like they did in 1980 and ask for everyone's silver or just take everyone's silver by cutting off the buying part of the comex and only allowing people to sell it whether they learn how to space mine i made a video on this there's an asteroid coming towards earth i think it arrives in 2026 and it has they, they said 500 quintillion dollars worth of precious metals on this asteroid and if they are able to somehow mine this asteroid they said gold would be so plentiful it would be less expensive than finding a rock outside and trying to sell it they said we would never have to worry about precious metals again which would obviously destroy the market now they don't have technology yet to space mine but in I mean, they still have five years until this asteroid comes, so maybe. Who knows? I'm sure Elon Musk will figure out some way to make it theoretic. I mean, you know, um, I guess in the, in the works, but I don't know if they could actually make that happen. Let me know what you think about that. Now, here's another very important part of this video. The first part, I just wanted to give a little context, an introduction to show what's look what, what it looks like moving forwards and what are the possibilities that we have and also what's the new information because we are advancing every single day i think nowadays especially with that article coming out is showing is letting people know and, and letting uh, i guess the individuals like you and i know that hey we are starting to take notice that this silver shortage is a serious thing and yes it might look good for prices yes it might be cute the, the u.s men admitted that they're having a hard time finding 13 million ounces when the global demand is 900 million ounces uh, and that's crazy to think about united states mint only produces 13 million american eagles per year they're having a hard time finding even 13 million ounces that's why there's a limited mintage on the type 1 and the type 2 eagles for 2021 
13 million ounces they couldn't even that they're having a hard time finding that is insane to think about only 13 million when the demand is 900 million and half of that's in the industrial sector and i'm sure it's just it's baffling so anyways i want to look at this because this chart down here is what i really want to get to but we got to cover this stuff so silver price and demand outlook last friday saw the big first miss in the U.S. unemployment or the employment figures for quite a while. Expectations, 20, 720,000, and the numbers were only around 235,000. U.S. dollar drop caught gold and silver, obviously jumping because when news like that comes out, people get scared, worried, and, and obviously that's going to push the price of precious metals up. We'll take a good look at silver price in the weeks or th this week's update and touch on some of the more longer term dynamics at play in the coming years. By the way, both of these articles came out yesterday. So this isn't like stuff that came out a couple months ago. This stuff is fresh off the press. That's why when I say breaking news, it, this stuff really is. I mean, this is the newest of the new, the latest of the late information that we have regarding what's going to happen with silver in, in this whole, I guess, supply shortage. So. There have been a lot of talk about the potential for the Federal Reserve to start tapering back on its bond buying program, but the underlying economy needs to remain relatively strong for it to do so. The weak jobs numbers last week, which missed forecasts by a mile, clearly threw some doubt in the mix as to whether or not the economy was ready to handle some monetary tightening from the Fed. Obviously, they can't. Obviously, they're going to try to cover it up as if things are okay or as if things are going to get better, but it's not. And people are starting to see through the BS. And as long, I wish they were just more transparent. I mean, the, the more they try to shake it off and the worse it gets, the more people start to notice. And then they start, they start I guess, deeming them as, as, as they, they don't believe them because they're not being honest. They just came out and, and were realistic. I'm sure that more people would even be on their side. But when people start to realize that they're belligerently, blatantly lying, trying to cover it up, it just makes them seem even worse. In, in their case, the better position would be is honest. One day, eventually, markets should wake up to the fact that the Fed cannot tighten monetary policy and normalize interest rates without severely negative consequences. The debt burden of governments, corporates, and individuals rely on ultra-low interest rates without causing a bust. Fed chair members, however, do like to talk about tightening a lot, though, pretending that they have an end game or an exit strategy, which they don't. The world is addicted to cheap debt and free money, so it's hard to take away that easily. Both gold and silver therefore tend to react positively whenever there is any underperformance of major U.S. economic data, so it pays to watch the monthly numbers closely. The weaker the underlying U.S. economy, the more monetary stimulus is needed to keep things running and the fiat money tap should eventually lead to a deterioration of the purchasing power of the currency which gold and silver provide safety from. But there are also key uses for silver in industrial applications that are more rarely covered in the news. And that's why seeing this stuff in the news is starting to show, it's starting to speak for itself. More and more people are talking about it, which also means more and more people are learning about the, 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 the extremity of the silver shortage. Like they just said, it's starting to become almost mainstream now, which is important because... One of the, this is one of the main things, supply and demand, the fundamentals for gold and silver is what affects the prices the most. But people are trying to talk about the, 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 the monetary part of it or the stuff that has nowhere near as much pull, which is, is silly. But anyway, silver is the best electrical and thermal conductor of any metal on the planet. Hence why it plays an important role in systems that require efficient use of electricity, such as we know all this, right? I'm not going to go into this. We know all this, but let's go into the numbers. Globally, $141 billion was spent on solar energy technology development in 2019. In the U.S., solar energy is expected to compromise 48% of renewable power in 2050, up from 11% in 2017. 
And this is why the longer term picture is very important to take note of, because we're not just talking about 2030. We're talking about several decades in the, in the future, 2050. Think about silver's price by then. Holy crap. U.S. solar capacity eclipsed 100 gigawatts from the first time in 2021. Globally, the number of EVs on the road rose 43% in 2020 over the previous year. 43% over the previous year. 43%. As part of his infrastructure plan, President Biden has proposed a $174 billion dollar or billion dollars in direct support for electric vehicles with a globe or a goal creating 500,000 EV chargers nationwide. And that is a lot of the physical demand that's going to be coming. And, and this is the very important part. Pay, pay close attention to the yet of this sentence. A lot of physical demand that will come from the push towards renewable energy is yet to be seen in the silver market, but it will come. The main things that are going to be pushing silver higher, why we're so bullish, hasn't even happened yet. It will be happening over the next three, four years. Many car manufacturers are now accepting the superiority of electric vehicles in terms of their efficiency and performance, which only gets better each year. And I'm telling you, when I, when I say this, every automobile company is going to be an electric vehicle by 2030 a race a race has already begun for major brands to make a big shift towards evs by 2030 hyundai's luxury brand genesis said to be moving 100 percent evs by 2030 um, nissan is targeting 40 percent of u.s sales to be EV by 2030 mercedes aims for 50 percent uh, and even higher performance brands such as porsche are looking to expand their ev range from be up to 80 percent by 2030 I just heard Volvo announce it. More silver is required in EVs than traditional ICE vehicles, so we expect this to be a major driver for increased industrial demand in the years to come. So if we break down the silver supply and the demand fundamentals, not a lot has changed in the past decade. According to the Silver Institute's World Silver Survey, silver supply as a total, which includes recycling, has remained a very stable at Circulate the 1 billion ounces per annum, and that's since 2012. Demand, too, since 2012 has ranged between 900 million and 1.1 billion ounces per year. Again, very stable. Industrial demand has grown from 450 million ounces in 2012 to 524 million ounces today, but quite a modest increase and nothing spectacular yet. One significant growth area sticks out as a solar. PV or photovoltaic demand, which grew from 55 million ounces in 2012 to 100 million ounces today. What isn't on the chart below is a separate column for electric vehicle demand, which is said to grow by 90 million ounces in, or 90 million ounces by 2025. If we see EV demand at 90 million ounces in 2025, we are also assuming this sector only to increase much further by 2030 given that the many commitments by automakers have a 2030 target and not 2025. Silver EV demand should be conservatively growing to reach a level of more than 10% of total silver demand globally. This is a big deal, as given the silver supply outlook remains incredibly stable, we could easily see a very decent deficit in the silver market in the years to come, thanks to electric vehicle adoption. Even if the market in the future was 10% deficit or less, that could still have a massive implication for the rise of prices or the prices rising as a talk of supply deficits often feed through the investment sector, sparking additional investment demand by speculators. Wow. If you read this article and really understand what they just said, then you will never have to worry, fear, doubt, Silver as the best investment, the safest, smartest, by far the smartest investment for the next several decades to come. If you understand what they just said in this article, nothing else in the world, no other investment, no other asset is even close, is even close to how much potential silver as an investment has. Nothing.
Not even close. You can't find any other articles that talk about stuff like this with it, or you can't find any other investments um, that that have this type of of information implicating that investment rising that much. Nothing. Silver is literally the the best investment, the smartest investment, makes the most sense times ten, times a hundred. So here's a chart of silver supply and demand over the last 10 years. So like they said, it's been pretty stable, but moving forwards, remember demand is going to be getting higher. Demand is getting higher, but that doesn't mean supply is getting higher. That means just the demand is meaning that it's going to be harder to meet those demand expectations. And what's going to happen if they don't have enough silver to make the newest, latest Tesla silver is going to be, more of a necessity producers turn into consumers the consumers turn into the producers the people like you and i that want the silver will be selling it to the people that need the silver so the other big change in the above chart is a recent spike in etps which are uh, exchange traded products which jumped over 300 million ounces in 2020. so the future industrial demand story as highlighted above is clearly impacting investor appetite. So the larger silver market falls to into a supply deficit in the future years, the higher the likelihood of investment demand and ETP flows. The snowballing effect can naturally lead to further deficits in supply and significant resets in the price. The perfect storm is here. The stars have aligned. The floodgates have opened. Silver. What we've been talking about since 2015 on this channel and so many other people have is starting to happen and will really start to to play into effect with pricing over the next 10 years. The next five years, if you want to talk about, you know, um, I guess really pushing the price, but over the next 10 years, I see it even going higher. If you are planning to sell in the next five years, though, you're going to shoot yourself in the foot don't do that i mean yes you might make a pretty penny but if you could wait five more years ten more years trust me it's going to be worth it silver has a monetary history that remains today as a lot of investors still prefer to hold their wealth in silver coins and bars rather than paper with infinite supply which is fiat currency Investors also flock to the metal and safe haven rush at times, so the price does benefit greatly from an increase in monetary demand. But the real driver we see for the future demand sits with its immense industrial applications in the new growth sector for electric vehicles. And that's why this article is so important to take note of to give context to this article. Unlike the silver spot price, the growth in industrial demand is quite stable and predictable, but the underlying price is known to move about in dramatic fashion. So investors should think about the long-term implications for silver and not get too much smaller or too caught up in the daily or weekly moves. And that's what a lot of newer investors have trouble at. They hopped on the Wall Street silver train. At $30, they were expecting within six months to see silver at $500, checking the price daily, daily, weekly, price isn't doing anything, and actually it's starting to go down. They think they made a mistake, and then they sell it once they're already $5 in the red per ounce. Not the way to go. Not the right move. Understand your investment before you get into it. If you understood the silver markets understood that it's slower paced than, than crypto, understood it's more of a hedge against inflation, and we're not talking about selling for 15, 20 years. Then you would see that, that your investment's dropping and buy even more of it since your dollar per ounce average is so high at $30. So yeah, regardless of the volatility of or future prices, we are no doubt going to see 100 million ounces per year of new additional silver demand coming from the EV sector in the future years, which will likely send the overall market into a supply deficit. Silver is a unique metal that is not easily replaced by an alternative when electrical 
efficiency and the number is one goal investors should feel confident in the longer term tailwinds that benefit the silver market as these are in our opinion even much stronger than those benefiting gold much stronger this was a very good article this is probably one of the best articles i've read in a while talking about the numbers talking about the reality talking about the future the future is what i always try to pay attention to on this channel a lot of people can talk about the history what's happening right now but talking about the next 10 years they even went up to uh 50 by by the year 2050 that's what we need to look at that's where silver's real real value is going to start showing this was such a good article this was such a good article wow this article exposed a lot, and this was like breaking news to look into today, but this article really set the, the pace for looking towards the future of silver prices. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Remember, I have new merch, Stack Silver, and that sold out is even more relevant now after watching this video and watch and covering those articles Make sure you get your hands on one of these bad boys. Um, it, the the, the, the um, quality of the shirt is really good. It's 100% combo cotton. Um, it it's, has a ribbed crew neck, side seam, shoulder, shoulder tape, double needle hems. Um, it, it's really good quality. I chose the more expensive type of quality shirt, and I just lowered the price, so I'm not making as much, but I just wanted you guys to feel comfortable. And all of these clothes are really cool. We have the Got Silver shirt, and on the back it says, because I do. This one says, the dollar is worthless. And then it says on the back, or and then it says, so buy silver. And then on the back it has three nines fine. This is the Greedy hoodie. It has the dollar sign going down on the back. It has a barcode saying priceless. We have the Dollar Crash hoodie, where it's just a dollar sign with the skull and crossbones. Uh, we have the slightly skeptical line, because we are all slightly skeptical. And then the new design, which is the Stack Silver. I really like this new design. I can't wait. This is like that shirt I'm going to throw on when I'm running to the store or whatever. This shirt is so cool. I love it. I love it. So, yeah, slayersmerch.com. I will link this, this, um, this new listing in the description if you want to buy it. Let me know what you think about it. Yeah, Slayers, oops, slayersmerch.com. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you're subscribed because I'm doing a 50K giveaway. You don't want to miss it. Trust me. Thanks for tuning in. This is Silver Slayer. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.